Hello, hello, welcome back guys. We are having some nice news from Alibaba. Actually, the earnings report is out and it's currently up about uh, 5 to 6 percent. Now, of course, this may go up and down a little bit, but uh, we're going to examine what happened with, uh, with the earnings report and why the stock is actually up right now. It's, in, it's more than 100 bucks back to 100 bucks after it had its uh, recent down days. Lately, it has been down uh, quite. It has been up actually quite some in the last week. You will see here at some point it was like 90, and it's up uh, and approaching 95. So it went up uh, about what, like 15 percent or so in the last week. And right now, it seems like this trend is continuing. Okay, let's see what happened with the earnings report for Alibaba. Let's analyze it a little bit. So shares uh, have jumped as far as uh, 7% at some point. So when the, once the market opens, we'll see what's going to be the actual jump. But let's examine the finer details here. So Alibaba reported first quarter earnings on uh, Thursday that beat expectations. Here's what they did in the fiscal first quarter versus the consensus estimates here. Now, revenue of um, 30 billion, uh, I'm going to talk about it in uh, USD because it's easier to analyze, versus uh, 203 billion one over here, which, uh, yeah, it doesn't give us the exact amount in dollars, but uh, this is a bit, as you can see. Uh, not a massive, but still a bit, it looks like. And earnings per American uh, depository shares. Uh, again, it's an earnings here, but down 29%. It's more than expected, actually, but uh, down 29% uh, year on year. We expected that, but it's still better than what we expected. And this is why we're getting a positive reaction. And net income that is significantly better than expected, it looks like. Uh, 22.7 billion won versus 18.7 billion won. That's a pretty, pretty significant bit here. Now, in this quarter, Alibaba faced a number of headwinds, including a resurgence of COVID, which we talked about in the past. And um, it was a big problem for a financial metropolis like Shanghai is because it was being locked down, actually. And uh, it really affected the Chinese economy, as you can understand. And also, there has been a strict regulatory environment, which continues to be happening uh, after a year and a half uh, uh, after having their first crackdown on um, the tech sector. The Chinese government keeps doing that and uh, it has really, really affected uh, Alibaba lately, really affected Alibaba. And so they had a tough uh, quarter, as you can understand. So interesting to see a uh, very nice news coming back from Alibaba, which uh, remember it had some issues lately and it, it was down significantly. If we take a look at the last month, at some point it reached the 122 or so here, actually 125 it was the high of the day. And then it was started going down and then went down quite significantly near 90 or so. And then it's climbing back up. Now, will it reach this level soon? We'll see. But um, some interesting news that came out today, which were a prelude that actually looked bad for Alibaba, uh, was the fact that SoftBank was slashing their massive stake in Alibaba, is what uh, I was reading earlier. And I actually wanted to make a vid about it, but uh, it coincides with the earnings report. So uh, SoftBank was actually, is actually ready to sell some of its stake, as you'll see here. But um, generally speaking, uh, maybe they you know, maybe they, they, they need to rethink about it. And also they are selling some of it. I mean, I was looking at uh, this article a little bit earlier and um, you will see that they are positioned to sharply sell down their stake. I think I was reading something about uh, one third of their stake um, in derivatives is what they are going to be doing. But OK, I mean, we'll see what's going to be happening. They could offload some, but they are looking to offload some uh, through uh, the next couple of years or so is what I was reading. So this is not going to be an abrupt sell that's going to bring the price down significantly or at least uh, quite a lot uh, at a steady pace. It's probably going to be happening through the years, through the months, and uh, it, it may, it's going to be unlikely that it's going to be affecting the stock price, I would believe. But we'll see. Now, some other articles here claiming, for instance, that Charlie Munger doesn't worry about a delisting is what we have been seeing in the past in terms of news for Alibaba. This article was a little bit of an interesting read because it, it was claiming that Charlie Munger doesn't worry about a delisting. And the reason for saying so is that um, Charlie Munger, who is the chairman of the Daily Journal Corporation, as we know, was not affected by the possibility of the potential delisting that we saw about. According to the latest 13F uh, holding report of the company, the company hasn't sold a share since the previous report and still owns 300,000 shares, now valued at 27.8 million. Now remember, the, uh, the company used to own uh, a double that amount. Uh, they sold some uh, more than likely because of tax uh, loss harvesting purposes, but still they own a significant chunk of Alibaba shares. Hopefully they're happy <laughs> with what is going on, now, on right now, at least in the earnings report. 
But okay, let's um, let's take a little bit of a quick look now, since we examined uh, what happened uh, during the earnings report and uh, the fact that Alibaba beat and uh, they're currently up at about five to seven percent. Again, this is going to be going up and down a little bit um, till the market opens, and then we'll see where it will rest. Like, like right now, it's about four five percent. I think it's going to be around a hundred bucks when the market opens. But then, as the as the news get um, pretty much transferred through uh, the U.S. I'm assuming that this may actually go up a little bit. We'll see, though. You never really know. Now, in terms of uh, what Alibaba has been uh, doing with its financials, we have talked about it in the past, and uh, the P ratio of the company has been slightly elevated uh, lately, that is. It has been going down a lot, but lately it has been a little bit higher. The thing is, uh, the price to free cash flow is still very, very low, and um, also the P ratio is probably go going to go down after the latest uh, earnings. Uh, but the price to free cash flow is uh, down even more and uh, looking much nicer here. And this is what we mostly care about, the price to free cash flow. Now, the outstanding shares have been going down and we know that Alibaba is going to be buying back some shares. And um, the fact that they have a total liabilities to free cash flow that's about three years, 3.2 years, means that they are very solvent because they, it would take them about 3.2 years of last year's free cash flow to pay back all the total liabilities, meaning that they are very, very solvent as a company, not much debt going on and uh, revenue that keeps growing and also we had results that show that uh, still the revenue keeps uh, increasing at least more than expected we did have a little bit of a slump that we were expecting but uh, this will happen especially at these current market conditions now the free cash flow growth has also been going down with the total equity also increasing i mean not going down increasing i meant to say now the margins have been uh, relatively suppressed lately we knew that uh, they have they have been going down and uh, the return on equity has also been going down at some point the revenue of the company was uh, was down and we talked about in the um, in the previous year they had the years they had um, actually the last year they had a bad uh, pretty much a bad year in terms of what they did in net income that is and it went down significantly but um, it li it looks like they're going they're coming back and uh, they're going to be doing significantly better in the next one or at least in the next uh, upcoming quarters. So, okay, this was again a crappy year because of many multiple reasons that we examined in the past in pre previous videos. But uh, I'm fully expecting Alibaba to fully recover, really, and uh, the, the price of the stock has been annihilated so much <laughs> that uh, it really, really points to a company that is a very, very worthwhile buy. And uh, you will see that the company has been doing about 28, 22 billion in terms of uh, free cash flow per year. Again, they had a little bit of a slump, but overall they're doing more than 20 billion. And um, if you take a look at the metrics of the company here, uh, you can quickly see that uh, this is a $256 billion market cap company. And uh, they're making like 20 to 30 billion in uh, free cash flow, at least for now. So this is not expensive at all. It's pretty cheap. Again, it's about 11 in terms of uh, ratio here, which uh, is great uh, for a buy. It's a cheap company to buy for sure. And if we, we use our stock evaluation tool over here, we can kind of reduce what kind of uh, price to pay for the company. Now, this has a lot to do with revenue growth, which, ha which has been massive uh, through the years for uh, Alibaba. But we can uh, assume that it's going to grow less, uh, even though they, had, they have had uh, some slump already. We can go maybe something like 10, 12 and 14 and we see what we get. Now, the net income margins have also been suppressed. Um, I don't know if that's going to last. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be using that low of a net income margin again. This was a year that was uh, out of the ordinary. It's not going to be happening uh, more, of, more, more than likely in the upcoming years. And so I'm going to go again, try some things in between here, 13, 15, and let's go 19 and try something that is actually, it actually makes more sense here. Again, this 13, uh, I believe it's, um, it's actually very little, frankly. And in terms of the free cash flow margins, I'm going to go what they have been doing, 90, about 90, 100, and 110. Again, it, this is an exercise in trying all sorts of different scenarios here. I think these, these are actually very pessimistic scenarios, frankly. But let's see what we're getting. So yeah, even for these pessimistic scenarios here, we are still in the green for Alibaba, which is amazing. Because uh, um, with a normal scenario, which I think probably the high <laughs> calculation over here would be more, like an, more or less like a normal scenario for the company, we're getting a 250 in terms of a price to pay right now for Alibaba. And even if we're going to, if we're going to go a little bit lower in terms of our projections, we are still sitting at 166, which is uh, like 60% more of what the company is right now. 
I frankly believe Alibaba is super, super cheap, and this is why it's one of my core and top holdings. And I'm willing to wait, of course, and see what's going to be happening. There's going to be some issues, of course, with the Chinese government. But again, I'm, I'm willing to hold it through the years and see what is going to happen. I don't really believe there's going to be an, uh, a delisting, but even if it does happen, I'm still going to be owning a company that is doing well. It's going to be in Hong Kong, but okay, it's still the same company and it's still the same amount of money and growth. So thanks for watching. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. And remember, you can always gain access to this tool by becoming a Patreon. You can find all the links in the description box below this video. And I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.